welcome back to Walk Wild. I'm at Port Swath with Theo. It's just behind me over there. We were meant to go rock climbing. Um, you can see the boulder over my right shoulder. And unfortunately, the tide is too high. We basically need to have someone be laying off the ledge, which is currently right up on the wave line. So it wouldn't be possible yet. So we're not really risking it. We're going away and we're going to come back when the tide's on the way down because it's still rising right now. So we're going to go for a swim and then come back later when we know the, wave, the waves won't be uh, bothering us on the platform. It's two days later. And we're finally back at the rock, ready to climb. We had to delay because the tides weren't right, but now as you can see, got a slight platform to work off and this is the rock we're going to be climbing up so we need to go up the top and set up the rope Theo's going to show me how to do that because I've never done that before and then we can crack on Uh, that's fine, but you just got to keep an eye on it like that. You run it around. This is Dyneema, so, and this is nylon. Dyneema is kind of it's thinner, but it's it's more preferred nowadays. Belay. 
You've got to make really nice, really good holds. Good, yeah, use that one. Try and hold on to that. It's going to be hard, but it'll be a good test. Yeah, and well, I've kind of, I've stuck, I'm stuck now. Nicely. Yeah, it's a hard, it's like rounded. Yeah, sloper. Yeah, that was a hard, that's a hard handle to get. I got you, mate, just lean back. Awesome man, really, really strong. Very confident there. <laughs> narrow I can get in through so we've just come into Montello Tower I don't know how much you're gonna be able to see in here it's pretty uh, dark, but this is one of the things that the Channel Islands is known for, was its World War II history. As I mentioned, when it was occupied by the Germans, they built loads of sea defences. They expected this to be an area where they could mount an attack on Britain. You know, it's in, in the corner of France, in, in between England and France, the, the coastline, so it was a really good position for any kind of invasion they may have needed to do. So all the islands actually have some kind of fortification on them. Alderney has a train line, I believe. Guernsey has lots of these forts. Sark has the coupe, amongst other things. So it's pretty cool to explore these areas now and just learn about a bit of the history of these places. So I just climbed up there. Whew, that's pretty tough. Now I've got this view up top. Up there. 
and you can see what a good vantage point this would have been for looking out to sea for the Germans. Which is the second defence tower on the headland and we were just reading the information plaque and apparently it was 1940 when the Germans invaded Guernsey and uh, spent three years building these fortifications um, and they were loaded with guns that could fire up to 22 kilometres to sink any enemy ships and apparently a lot of it was built with forced labour and lots of these ones were built by Polish uh, prisoners of war. No, not, not necessarily the Germans themselves weren't doing the building, they were orchestrating it and actually a lot of the prisoners of war were the people who were doing all the hard graft. And I mean, it's a pretty formidable position as you can see this coastline and it's sort of ugly, brutalist almost, but you know, it's a part of history and that's what makes it fascinating. And in such a spectacular area, Unfortunately, there's a big mist on the sea today, so you can't actually get that panorama that you usually do, but I mean, you get an idea of the coastline and how stunning the views are, how good they are for vantage points.